Welcome to implementing Telev's Optical Land Pond Protection. The purpose of this video is to define the Telev's Optical Land Pond Protection and provide a process for its implementation. The topics covered in this video will be an overview of the Telev's Optical Land Pond Protection feature and step-by-step -step detailed instructions on how to install and provision the Telev's Optical Land System for pond protection groups. Type B protection makes use of a splitter, which allows two pawn inputs on the OLT side of the circuit. This pair of pawn interfaces is considered a pawn protection group, or PPG, with a primary and secondary interface. During normal operation, a primary pawn port controls and provides connectivity to the ONT group. The standby pawn port listens to the group and becomes the primary when it detects a failure on the pawn port. Detection of a pawn failure and switch takes less than five seconds. Along with pawn failure, the pawn protection algorithm can detect an uplink failure from the primary OLT. If the primary OLT becomes isolated on the network, all pawn ports that are enabled for path protection will switch to the secondary pawn. Enter OLT pawn protection is when type B pawn protection is implemented on two ports on different OLTs. This is the preferred configuration for reliability reasons and is the option recommended by Telabs. Intra OLT pawn protection is a pawn protection group on two ports on different pawn cards within the same OLT. This is typically used for cost savings. It should be noted that in this configuration, some OLT hardware in the path is not redundant. While no messaging is required for pawn protection switches to occur, it is beneficial to communicate status information from the primary to the secondary pawn to speed up switches and minimize service disruption. Outages of up to one minute can occur if no sync channel is present and the system blindly switches as all services must be reconfigured. With the sync channel present and sufficient time to sync, the two sides will have the same configuration and switches will be in the one to five second range. To ensure optimal failover speeds, it is recommended that protected pawns be paired in such a way to stripe the pairs across multiple pawn cards. This will minimize the time needed to recover the link by sharing the load across four pawn card processors. This example illustrates striping with a QIU7 card, but the scheme also applies to the OIU8. There are two key points associated with the optical budget of a protected pawn network. First, the secondary pawn must have an optical level 5 dB lower than the primary pawn when using the QIU7 card. This is done by placing an additional 5 dB of attenuation to the secondary pawn. This additional budget is not required when using the OIU8. Second, pawn splitters with two OLT inputs can add up to 1 dB of loss to the optical budget versus splitters without a coupler. Telebs recommends deploying two input splitters at most installations to allow pawn protection to be added at a future date if needed. Before beginning the configuration process, the secondary pawn port should be disabled. Then the proper cabling and attenuation should be applied. Creating a PPG prior to properly cabling out the secondary pawn could inadvertently cause a switch and loss of traffic. Pawn protection is configured by clicking on the pawn protection button on the top of the GUI. Buttons exist to create, edit, and delete pawn protection groups. Select the create button to create a new protection group. The pawn protection group created on an OIU8 card is non-revertive. This means that the active pawn port is considered the primary and will continue to provide services to the pawn if it is healthy. The way to restore time defines the time the primary and secondary must be active prior to switching. This provides a lag for the switching event to ensure the primary is stable, available, and ready to take over. 60 seconds is default. The sync channel ID defines the VLAN used for synchronization of state between the primary and secondary pawn of the protection group. This channel speeds up protection actions by synchronizing state information between the primary and secondary pawns. 
This sync channel only needs to be configured for inter-OLT protection. The VLAN dedicated to sync channel must be established on both OLTs prior to creating the PON protection group. OLT TID and PON AID fields will define the two PON ports that are connected to the splitter. Any two compatible PONs can be used. The only requirements are that the OLT for both ports must be managed by the same EMS, the PONs must be of the same PON type, and must be of the same card type. In the OIU-8, the primary PON will be the initial primary PON and the EMS will copy any provisioning from this PON to the secondary PON. During normal operations, the EMS will copy any configuration and status on the primary PON to the secondary PON's ONT automatically. So they do not need to be managed separately. All changes must be made on the primary PON ONTs. When configuring a QIU7 PON protection group, the failover is reverted. This means that the PON port assigned to the primary will be the active PON port if both the primary and secondary PON ports are operational. The same requirements apply to the QIU7 PON protection group as the OIU8. Once a protection group is identified, select Apply. Once the group is established, the secondary PON port can be enabled in the PON protection group list. It is critical the PON protection be tested prior to adding any service to protected PON interfaces. A sample ONT should be placed onto the PON and traffic verified on both the primary PON and the secondary PON. This is necessary to verify that the PPG configuration is correct, the primary and secondary PON are cabled correctly, and that both chassis have access to the uplink network. First, verify the ONTs can be seen on the primary PON. Then pull the primary fiber or disable the primary PON port from the EMS. Verify that all ONTs appear active on the secondary PON. There should be an ONT OLT link loss of signal alarm indicated for the ONTs previously active on the primary PON. The secondary PON should have an alarm indicating PON is on protect. If traffic can be verified, do so. Traffic should restore during the switch in less than five seconds. After a few minutes, switch the PON back. Verified traffic is restored and it alarms clear in both cases. The switch should take less than five seconds. PPGs can be shown in multiple colors on the PON status screen. White indicates PON is in a normal state and the active and standby link is in a known good state. Red indicates that neither side is reported as active and most likely the PON is out of service. This can happen if both the active and standby PON are disabled or in certain failure scenarios. Amber indicates that there is an active PON, but one of the two PONs is abnormal or PPG sync is not working. The active PON is carrying the traffic, but the standby PON may not be available for protection at this time or may switch slowly. During upgrades, system maintenance and other scenarios it is often useful to be able to force the protection over to the secondary link. This can be done by disabling the primary PON from the ports view PON tab. Setting the context will show all relevant PONs within that context. Simply select the drop down to set the PON to either enabled or disabled. This concludes this video. In it, you have learned an overview of the Telebs Optical and PON protection feature, and step-by-step -step detailed instructions on how to install and provision the Telebs Optical and system for PON protection groups.